Hey, Tom, good morning and good evening to your time. So basically it's late afternoon. So <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. hey, Reed, <laughs> thanks for having me. Absolutely. Glad to finally have you on for this. I, uh, I know you're, you're one of the MVPs that I think I've probably known uh, longer than others because we, we met both at our first and only in-person MVP summit uh, back in, yes, was, I think we were saying 2019. Yes, it was my <laughs> first and my last in-person MVP summit. So hopefully this will change next year. Keep our mm -hmm. fingers crossed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hopefully, getting to a chance to to hang out in person again. Um, but yeah, I, the, it's it's something where I think this has been a long time coming. I I know we've talked a couple of times about getting you on, and finally glad to get you on, especially I think for a topic that is a feature that people have been asking for a, a long time since apps have been out. To, you know, have one workspace and technically mul they call it audiences, but multiple apps or app configurations off of a single workspace. So I'm really cool. excited actually to see this feature finally come out. I I have to admit that we are already using this feature for production environments mm -hmm. because it was simply, it was there and everything else would have been complicated things by magnitude so and i can say it works as expected um that's good to know luckily uh nevertheless so it's one of my most wanted feature exactly yeah especially for for architectural and our, uh, governance and everything else in in the infrastructure yes, of a yes. tenant and it, it simplifies the, well, it reduces the number of unique workspaces that you have to have for sure, uh, which is very useful. Um, I, and I know, like, we can geek out about this uh, very quickly because it, it is a it's a really nice new implementation. But I'd love to give a, a little bit of space to allow you to introduce yourself as well to the channel uh, for those tuning in. As I mentioned, Mar uh, Martin is um, uh, also uh, someone who's uh, been an MVP for f you got your fifth year chip this year. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Did you? Uh, do you have your? Do you actually enough. have your five-year chip yet? I'm still waiting for that. I got my yearly what? chip, but I haven't gotten my blue one yet. It's it's been shipping delays, so I still have not gotten my fifth-year special chip for the award. Oh, this is this is so it, then it's simpler to send this chip to Germany than to <laughs> no. I, I, I keep getting you emails. Are, you are, you, I'm five, you, I'm you ten minutes living... from yeah. I'm 10 minutes from Microsoft. <laughs> okay. It's this funny. Is, yeah. This is weird. In, in July, I got an email saying, We're, we'll send you your regular chip for 2022-23 now. You'll get your five-year chip in August. And then in August, you'll get it in October. So sometime in this month, I'm supposed to get it. But there's been, it, I think it's COVID production delays by whomever is making it. That's my guess. Uh, but yeah, we, we both got our fifth year will be getting our fifth year chips this year, which is cool. Uh, you know, it, it, so it doesn't I, feel I, like that long, right? It doesn't. So no, especially not the last two years. <laughs> I, ha I had the impression that the COVID years have been running faster than every year before that. So it, it was fun. My birthday is next week, and I'm not actually turning 37. I'm only turning 35 because the last two years don't count. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is a smart move, right? Yeah. But but you are not looking than 35. You look like <laughs> your early 30s, like 32 or something like that. I this can thank my parents for that. Cool. <laughs> ah. Yes. Um, but yeah, that like. For mine, at least, that's a bit of an introduction of uh, how, how we know each other. But uh, yeah, you want to talk a bit about yourself, uh, what you do, um, especially like some of the things that have helped to you know, get you that uh, MVP. Yes. So for, for, for quite some time, now let's say more than, almost more than seven years, I, I, get, a, I get my things with Power BI. I started with Power View, so I call it also a little bit like that for this 
allows me to say more than seven years. And my, uh, as I started using it, I was working for a BI company and I was, and for this reason, it was a BI software company and was a competitive product. And I started installing the first uh, version. It was uh, SharePoint was required. Yeah, I remember. And that. I failed. It was an epic fail. I, I spent two weekends to get this up and running. And I was thinking I was, we are safe. This will never, ever do. And then first Power BI desktop version released, or it was not called then Power BI desktop. I was in love. And since then I started blogging, answering questions on the community, speaking about this. I started speaking about Secret Server, but Power BI has taken so much place that I no longer have always the latest SQL Server Management Studio or Azure Data Studio installed. Yep. Sometimes I'm surprised when I, one of these products reminds me, oh, there's a newer version of me. Do you want, no, not now, not now. Uh, well, especially later. with, with maybe SSMS, later. it's like 600 megabytes. It's a, it's a large file to download. Yes, and so, Years ago, it did not happen. I was always one of the first people ever who installed the newest version. And this, yeah. uh, I do not have the time any longer because Power BI has uh, become great, uh, so great or large. And for this, all this blogging, answering questions, speaking, they finally earned me the MVP award. I was working <clears throat> for um, my whole life as a consultant mm -hmm. using Microsoft technology, um, creating analytical solutions. And since last year I switched. So when people are moving from somewhere to Microsoft, they tend to say it's went to the darker side. So then I'm now on the lighter side because I'm working for Microsoft, Microsoft customer right now so but uh, i will talk about this in a couple of seconds when i'm presenting so mm -hmm. who i am so i am no longer a consultant um microsoft is our customer so beware microsoft <laughs> well that's awesome to hear Congrats. Uh, it's not our customer it's maybe it's also our customer it's our vendor so vendor vendor there, I am vendor. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. this was confusing no problem. But yeah, like uh, I, just to comment on your, your your update thing, the three things that every time I open up my computer that always require updates, Notepad++, and I swear every day there's a new update for that, VLC Player and um, SQL Server Management Studio. Every time I open it, there's an update available. Would you like to download it? It's like, I don't, I don't have, you know, I, I, I do not need to do this three times a week. So... Uh, I, I try to stay up to date using Power BI Desktop, also the Power BI app, and sounds fun, also the Power BI Report Builder. These are now the tools where I'm eagerly awaiting um, to create or well, have the latest version on my machine. I, I, I can say I'm excited for two out of three of those things that you mentioned. I can't say I'm as excited to get updates for a report builder. I, I'm just not as, I build them. I'm just not as much of a fan of uh, using the, you know, the old report server uh, or um, reporting services uh, builder just because it, I'm nowhere near as good with that language and scripting for custom reports and for paginated reports as I would say with DAX and Power Query. So I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm, by no way a Power BI or paginated report creator expert, by no way, but I do not want to getting uh, to be told that it's it doesn't work because of the older version. So this is the reason why I always 
try to having the latest. That's totally fair. Yep. You don't want to age yourself out as a consultant to not have the the proper version installed, or you're doing a demo and realize <laughs> you haven't updated to the latest version yet. Like, oh, sorry guys, I forgot oh. to update to the new Power BI. Yes. So I do not. But yeah, I'm thinking uh, more targeted for today as well. I think we're we're going to be getting into some really good and in depth conversations on the new multiple audience as they call it, sharing uh, capabilities that have been uh, released in preview for apps in Power BI, correct? Pardon, I was, I was reading in parallel the comments on the live stream. During my presentation, I will do not do that, do not get distracted. Please, <laughs> what was the question? No worries, I was just uh, bringing up the, the topic of the day that we'll be talking about, which is uh, sharing okay. The, the, you know, the new and preview feature uh, that we'll be getting in, in depth in. Yes, so I am when I am ready when you are. Sure, let me know and I can flip the screen over. So I am, I'm done. Yep. So thanks everyone for watching and attending and thanks Reed for this introduction. And by the way, it was great having a talk after years besides some Side notes, talking to each other, one, it's, it's great. So now Absolutely. I'll try to present and start my presenter mode. I try to. So here we are. Excellent. So this is one of my favorite features um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, I, I come to these reasons in minutes uh, and as I already mentioned, we are using, we meaning uh, the company I'm working for is using this already in production, even if it's in GA. There are reasons because we are doing this. Um, I come also to, I come to this later. So, but now let's start. Um, <clears throat> presentation is about who I am, why is sharing so important and how does multiple audience for Power BI apps work and why it's so great that we now have this feature. Um, I'm Tom Martens. I'm working as the solution architect at Munich Re. Munich Re is one of the, or maybe it is the largest reinsurance company. Sometimes quarter wise, there's a competitor from Switzerland, but most of the time we are leading. So, and we have a lot of teams business users, IT teams, creating a lot of Power BI solutions. And I'm trying to help by helping these teams to succeed, to fulfill their, uh, uh, reach their business goals. And I'm doing this using Microsoft technology for analytic, building analytic platform for 25, uh, 25 plus years. Next to sharing administration governance, also one of my favorite topics about Power BI and related is DEX. I was, a, oops, I was, a, sorry, I was able to write a book with Phil Seamark called Products with Power BI and all these things uh, earned me the Microsoft Data Platform MVP award. So <clears throat> when I start creating a presentation about a topic that is very, very important to me. I, I'm looking for definitions and here it's a definition about the word sharing that is not related to the feature itself. So, and this definition on Wikipedia says it's a joint use of a resource, for example, a Power BI report. Um, and it's also the process of dividing and distributing. Exactly that is what this feature does. So this seems that people from the Power BI team have also put this, uh, this definition to Wikipedia. And then finally, <clears throat> sharing is a basic component of human interaction, exactly that. So I, I totally believe in um, working in a team because I always think, I'm, so, I'm sorry. <coughs> ah, I'm sorry, please excuse me. 
No problem. Uh, I, st I strongly believe that um, when we are working together with others, then we can solve problems faster. So sharing, even if it sounds a little bit uh, weird in the data-driven world, that sharing is a basic component of human interaction. I think it is, and it also strengthens our social ties and um, ensures a person's well-being. So if I translate the last part of this sentence to enterprise life, then sharing also uh, ensures the enterprise well-being. So I strongly believe this is true. Nevertheless, back to Power BI, whenever we introduce, in, whenever we started using Power BI as day one. And in this day, <clears throat> we created a workspace, created our report, we created an app. Hopefully we created an app. Always start uh, use an app to share your Power BI report and then provide access to users, groups, and it works. It works like a charm. Um, it was so easy one of my first Power BI projects was a fun project. I guess the data set was thousand <clears throat> one hundred or thousand two hundred rows of data. So it was a tiny data set, but it was distributed to uh, twelve or thirteen thousand. I'm not sure about that exactly. 12 or 13,000 people. So, and it was easy. One workspace, one app, life is good. So then <clears throat> we realized a little bit later, yes, we have the same data source, the same data set, mm -hmm. but the content, meaning the reports or the dashboard should be different for different uh, groups. I tried to uh, highlight this a little bit. So this group, the upper group, wants to see two reports, and the bottom group just wants to see re just once or has to see report one. From day one, I consider this not uh, a very specific problem. From day one, this was not possible doing this uh, with Power BI because there is this one workspace, one app relationship. So people or we started to duplicate maybe the data set, duplicating the reports and problem solved more or less. But from a, a program or DevOps perspective, this is hell because we have many, many artifacts that have to be duplicated. If there is a little tiny change in report one, this report has to be deployed to different workspaces. Two apps have to be updated, things like that. Um, development becomes uh, complicated by magnitudes. So we learned a little bit about not duplicating the data sets by using shared data sets. So it's always a good idea to separate the data, um, <clears throat> the data from the content, meaning it's always a good idea to work with two workspaces, um, especially if there are report creators that should not be able to see all the data set, meaning being a contributor in a workspace, to a workspace, but still row level security has to be applied or should be honored. And this works perfectly if I separate the data from the content. This works perfectly. And then still I have to duplicate my reports, but the data set no longer has to be duplicated. Um, so more data sets can be loaded at the same time. This is this is cool. We learned something, but still, um, duplicating reports is from a DevOps 
perspective it's it's a crime <laughs> whenever <Yeah. clears throat> we are talking well when i'm talking about separating data from um, the content i'm always getting asked about security manage permissions what is the difference and if someone becomes built permission this is necessary to create their own reports. Build permission is, you get it here by at manage permissions and is not affecting um, applied or implemented role level security. Role level security is the security guy, manage permission determines if you are seeing the data set, if you are opening up Power BI desktop and uh, try to connect to a Power BI data set. Then if you had have read permissions, you see the data set. But if you are not in any of the security groups um, assigned to any role that is defined for secu a role of security, then you will see no data. So it doesn't matter. Um, these are two different things, security, role level, Manage permission are you just seeing the house, but you can't enter it. So this is a little recap, starting from day one without um, multiple audiences. And now for some some weeks, maybe two or three, or already three months ago or two and a half months ago, this new feature, multiple audiences, has been introduced. And I already mentioned it, and I guess I will mention it more more than one time again. I, I really I really love this feature, but I I don't like the name uh, because it, it sounds cryptic, not fun. Multiple audience pop. It, it sounds cryptic. Um, I do not have a better name, especially because I love the name audience, because it's exactly, um, it, it describes what we are going, uh, what why we are using this feature ex exactly, uh, des describes what we are doing. What power, the official Power BI documentation. Um, with multiple audience for an app, now Power BI app also can create multiple audience groups within the same app. This is cool. And different permissions to each group is even cooler. So, and throughout the next, um, throughout the next slides, you will see this <laughs> little red dark rectangle at the bottom of each slide. It states do not migrate existing apps. Maybe it already happened. If not, don't hit upgrade. I had a couple um, of people already in uh, one individual, Matthias, in the chat. Yeah, um, <laughs> looks like he's had. There's been issues related to this, so I'll be curious so, to see to hear your your deep dive into why in a little bit. Exactly. I can't exactly say why this happened or what happened. Um, just don't migrate, just create a new workspace. But there is, yeah. let's say there is some kind of idea what happened and I will, I will uh, come to this. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, uh, and now <clears throat> before I go into some kind of demo. Uh, I show some old versus new appearance. If people, I guess, um, people are already facing this new outlook. So on the left, there's this old thing. There's here, I'm looking at my app. I see setup, navigation, and permission. On the right, I see setup, content, and audience. So this is a little bit different. Um, <laughs> existing old apps will not be affecting. 
sorry, this is true. Um, but if you want to migrate, if you want to uh, use it, you have and to get uh, this, either you have to unpublish or migrate your existing app works uh, app. <laughs> then whatever you are doing, if you unpublish and then create a new app, of course, you have to be aware that republishing also creates a new URL, meaning a new ID. And mm -hmm. if you have extensive existing documentation shared, then this can become quite cumbersome and also has to um, has to be considered the, if, if we are talking about costs. So basically, if it's just two audiences, just two reports, this configuration can be done in minutes. Adjusting existing documentation, different websites or things like that can be can take days. So you also have to be aware if you want to do this. Very good so. points. Yeah, I've discussed this with a, with a team that is owning a larger uh, app. Also, just three requirement is three audiences. Should we do it now or just have a really be sure what uh, documents have to be affected? And for this reason, there's large documentation. And for this reason, this migration is postponed uh, just because of, ah, we do not know how long we need to adjust the um, documentation. And if you look at the old workspace or look at a workspace that where the app is not migrated, you have this wonderful toggle that you can say, okay, now this dashboard, this report, this paginated report should be part of the app by just toggling this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My first, I, I, I create as soon as I, as I had access to this feature, I created a new workspace, mm -hmm. published reports, and what? Disabled. Huh. Yeah. I, this was my this was a moment of shock um, because I was thinking, okay, if this does not work, we cannot use it. Uh, but it uh, <laughs> it's confusing. It absolutely makes sense. So there is this new content thing or the second tab in the app tab where this content can be configured, and it makes absolutely sense. Because now there are audiences. Uh, if my, if someone thinks a little bit longer and maybe is smarter than I, it absolutely makes sense that this toggle is disabled. So where's the content? In general, what we see here now is a little is a little app, or it's my my demo app. And now I'm on the audience tab. There is a limitation that at the current moment, and this might change if there is a new GA date, or if this will become GA, at the current moment there is, are just 10 audiences. So you can spread the content between two audiences or groups. And what we see here is our three audiences. The mm -hmm. top left audience, new demo something, is the name of the app. Then there are two very simple audiences, see everything and see something. Um, you might think tennis can be tight. We have discussed this internally. 
and so maybe we will not it's or not maybe it's likely that we will not hit this limit in the next couple of years so 10 maybe is a good approach but sometimes i'm wondering where these limits come from and why i'm not cannot create 100 and then i have to scroll or something like that yeah i'll be curious about how they they account for that in the in the top like will there be a scroll bar there or, you know so basically um it will become very very difficult if there are more than 10 because they told me i was asking uh yes it will become very difficult and 10 audiences can be displayed at the same time on a 24 7 24 i forgot the number inch monitor not sure about 24 27. so it was by reason not by accident but i i'm wondering so nevertheless this is the audience the first audience thing mm -hmm. And this is an audience. And this audience is called as by default as the has a name of the app. Now <clears throat> you create a new audience, see everything, see something, and then you decide you do not need this audience any longer and you delete it maybe deleting the default the first audience is causing issues can be but it's not 100 percent sure that deleting this guy here this default workspace as uh, this app name the first <coughs> audience can create issues. <clears throat> I was able to create an issue by deleting this um, for testing purposes, but it's not confirmed that this is the reason. Um, so do not delete it, just rename it. And also renaming this thing here is not intuitive, maybe just double click on the audience if you see a typo or want to rename something just double click so context menu is not working so then i i i am not an application designer i am not a ui expert and i'm not or ux expert but i consider this now i'm con now i'm trying to configure my audience see everything and it's i consider it difficult so for this reason i created a documentation for my colleagues do this configuration um, in two steps start <coughs> on the right side configure the audience, meaning add users or groups. <clears throat> and then second step is hide, unhide per audience um, the content. I think it's a good practice for sure. Yes, so uh, I, I, <laughs> I created a lot of, or some, not a lot of, some workspaces, I tried this, and sometimes I was, it was, sometimes I wasn't not concentrated and things, I did not know where I was and things like that for this. I think this is, so this is my, my recommendation to my colleagues. Maybe it's not the best, but it works for me. Um, <clears throat> some words about, about audiences and groups and things like that um 
this is a plea use Azure Active or use groups instead of people as uh, uh, human beings, email addresses or things like that. Use groups. It's so much more simple to configure, to maintain and things like that. So this is an urgent plea. And if you if you do that, so this is the Azure Active Directory um, that I'm owning. So, <clears throat> so this is my personal tenant. So this is not um, the mm -hmm. Munich Re tenant because I am not a global admin. I'm not owning the AAD um, of Munich Re. So this would be, I guess, I would not be able to sleep any longer. Uh, but um, if you do this, consider, I, I also assume there's some kind of naming convention. This first three letters is Azure Active Directory, meaning it's to separate it from a local directory, a local, uh, local active directory group. Then there's <coughs> three letter word for the service <coughs> because it's Power BI service then, uh, indication of the workspace and what is the purpose of this group being an audience in this workspace used by the Power BI uh, service and then finally a name. So having a naming convention for um, active or groups in general is, I guess it's a good idea. Now you see, I'm coming to step two. Now you see that there is this active directory group already has been added. Now I'm coming to step two. And now this is also something where I think it was not. Uh, you just see or just get an idea um, how to hide or unhide it that if you hover over the name of the artifacts um, then a little eye appears if it's if you, you can cross it out um, just by clicking on the eye and then this artifact is not being visible cannot be accessed by the audience if you just stare at your screen, you have no idea how to configure this. So this, I guess I spent a minute staring at this screen because I do not like to read uh, help pages or documents. I just want to, I just, most of the time I think I'm smart enough and then sometimes I realize I'm not. Um, so, but this is also something that could be a little bit more intuitive how to do this. Just over, cross the eye, it works. Yeah, the um, I think similarly, they, <clears throat> in Power BI Desktop, they used to have the eyes conditional to only show up when you hovered, and then they turned them on permanently just to make them more visible. So I do think there are cer certain UI designs that could be improved uh, for, for navig sure. Navig uh, sure. navigation experiences, yeah. Sure, of course, but to be honest, um, so I did not mention what is this. So there's a left part. Obviously, something is missing and there's a right part. In the middle, there is a preview. The preview of a content. This is, this is good if you have 10 audiences and 50 reports and dashboards then preview is good but i would like i would i would love to have a small table rows artifacts columns and then just the eye is always visible crossed or not not crossed it would be much much more i guess from my perspective more simple um but you are right it's ui so um, 
when you are visiting the app, this is a little glitch right now because you see something here. So this is this is I'm this is a screenshot from the app from the web browser. You see all new demo content, okay? Because it's not deleted, it's not renamed, it's just there for mm -hmm. demonstration purposes. It should be renamed, for example, to see everything. And then there are just should be just two. See something and remember this guy. Oh yeah. Uh, sorry, what well, was the wrong button? Um, <laughs> so it's uh, there's no new audience. So this this is a glitch and will be removed sooner or later. So. Here I see new audience as an audience, but it's just simply it's it's a button and not an audience. Ah, a detail. And <clears throat> now now we have more. May I guess so? If there is a requirement um, to have or spread content across or two multiple audiences, then maybe you also rethink your style of navigation. And this is just a simple reminder that there is a feature called cross report drill through, meaning it's possible to navigate from report one to report two by this feature. Um, oops, sorry. So, first, to enable this feature, first step, enable cross report navigation on the target report. You do this in Power BI Desktop. So this is the first step for report two. Second step is en enable this feature on the report settings for the um, source report, the source for the navigation. So this is also something that you, uh, maybe you used this feature in the past and it wasn't, maybe not, you do not know exactly why, but maybe you start rethinking about this feature as how to navigate between reports. Um, So, and this is also some kind of uh, what I see here. I'm looking at the report as someone that has no access to this. So, this is my report one here. Mm -hmm. I am, and this is amazing. And it was, I was, I was surprised that this. Um, cross report drill through is uh, not available. I was afraid that it's there, and if I hit it, then someone tells me you do not have access. So personally, I hate it when I'm able to when I'm seeing the door, but I cannot pass. So I have, yeah. I'm, I'm much more relaxed if I do not see the door. <laughs> Uh, because then yeah. I do not want to pass. But if there's a door, I want to pass. And no, not you, Tom. What? <laughs> this this is this is cool. Uh, and I agree. There's also, yes. So I I, I hate that. Um, it would be nice if they could they could detect whether or not a because uh, that you you could harvest the Active Directory information from the person logged in. So it would be nice if they basically could turn that on or off. Like, does this person have have read permissions uh, basically to they to that re, uh, to that at least the workspace and if not then just basically hide that so um yes so i was surprised but this time in a good way um so and there's also i, I will show you this in a couple of seconds live um so and there's also in a on report one is also a deep link because i was Trying if there is a deep link, meaning an URL. OK, 
Can I enter? No, I can't. Ah, uh, surprise. Uh, not, I'm relieved. And now some kind of demo. First, here we are. So <coughs> this is what you see here is the Power BI app. It's not the Power BI desktop app, it's the Power BI app. I'm using, I personally love to use this app for testing my app because otherwise it always requires different accounts or logins and things like that. And it's really easy to, so now I'm logged in to a workspace as Tom Martens. Uh -huh. And now if I hit this guy here, go to drill through, I don't see, so I do not know that there is more. But if I go to my, I am so sorry, uh, I closed my browser and now it's, now it's public that I'm using maybe one of, one of the two users who is using Edge. Um, I do, I love it. Please forgive me. Microsoft, did you hear that? I use Edge, the other guy. And now I'm going to the app. It's called New Demo Content. Um, here you see, by the way, you see this new audience. Audience. And if I go here, I go to Drill Through. There's this page one. And now I can I can navigate to this report. And please. Do not, uh, so there are reports out there that are a little bit more beautifully designed, but this <laughs> here is about testing sex and not mm -hmm. winning a content. So this works really like expected um, that, sorry, that this is there and it's not there in the app. So there's also something that I want to, or you have to be aware of. And this is now if I'm entering the configuration mode. So there are a lot of workspaces, sorry. Um, so everything is grayed out. Uh, update, sorry. <clears throat> Audience. And now I'm hovering over this thing here. And then there's the eye and I, I can hide or unhide it. There is one specific thing that you have to consider. So now I, I cross this saying basically that the audience new demo content is not allowed to see the content of the report too. Um, okay, I'm going here. There are pending changes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, I changed something. And I click continue. So this is, this sometimes happens and it's likely that it will happen when you are, have configured 80% of your configuration and there are eight audiences and hundred reports and 30 dashboards. And then you say, continue, then all the configuration will be lost there is no state if you for whatever reason want to leave that page use another browser tab do not leave that page until 
you are done and updated the app. The product team is considering things, how a state can be safe but not applied. Um, this sounds uh, in, in <coughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> this sounds like this rant, if it's, <coughs> if it's a rant, uh, it's not uh, justified, but it happens. Um, and then don't, don't leave this page until you update because you have to update everything or nothing because it's not, nothing is more frustrating than people are meeting at lunch saying, hey, it works. And the other one, it doesn't because the, peop the person who is uh, where not, it's not working is in the remaining one of the remaining two audiences that are not configured. So don't leave this page uh, or not by accident. So this is a little demo. Hopefully this was um, Give you an impression, and if you want to test your app without hassle-free, uh, without connecting, then I really can recommend the Power BI app because this is exactly how it will more or less uh, how it will look like um, in the app. So mm -hmm. I, I consider this a cool thing. So back. To the presentation. So there's before. Um, this is this is the good thing. Using this feature, we are back more or less. Uh, back to day one. Life will be good again because one workspace, one app, but multiple audiences. This is really really cool and i still recommend separating content from the workspace because of um role level security and things like that uh, i still recommend this but life will be good again so but as always um i love writing ducks i do that yes it's true um but i also meet people who hate writing ducks <laughs> and I also was asked the other day, hey, um, if we are using this new feature that you presented last week in our internal community, do we still require role level security? I personally hate this kind of question because um, Either I need top-notch data security or not. But I want, but what I'm trying to say, multiple audiences, this feature is not a security feature. Remember this build permission setting in the advanced options mm -hmm. by build that allows everyone who has his build permission to create his own reports. Um, but it's not, and this person is not restricted, will not be restricted to any kind of data. So maybe, maybe if you just use read access to the data set, Maybe then this person will not be able to see what he what he's not allowed to see without any role level security. But maybe this will work. But please be aware, multiple audience is not a security feature. And I, this one here, I already mentioned, there is no state, uh, no state without without applying to the app will be saved or applying later. Just checking something. If you have to check something, go to um, go to 
do this in a different tab, but not by not, but do not go back. And not sure if you uh, just want to show you this. Um, going back to my workspace, a second. It just takes a second or some seconds. Going to my update content. So page now now you see the preview what's inside this report and what what's that live connect to azure analysis services no it's imported data sequence no it's not page two of report two is using um is using an AI visual and the AI visuals are currently not supported in this preview. So basically nothing is broken. It will work like a charm, but these visual cannot be previewed here in this. <clears throat> this yep. is the team is working on this to uh, sort this, but at the current moment, it's not. And then Excellent. I'm done. I guess there are a couple of uh, some minutes to answer some questions. If there are any, and if you not do, did already answer all the questions, read. You got I'm through done. some of them. Uh, yeah, you got through some of them. I answered a few. I will say that the uh, I, I appreciate the considerations um, and the the uh, the gradual walkthrough that you did on this because there are. There are some good things and bad things in the implementation, um, as you've discussed and um, people have mentioned in the chat. There is uh, also, you know, anytime there's a button to click, people like to press it. So, you know, it, it is, uh, uh, yes, something that can be uh, tricky for individuals who want to, to upgrade a current workspace and then not and realize that's a one way direction. So hopefully they they maybe make it a bit clearer with some pop ups in the future. Like, are you sure? Click yes. Are you really, really sure? Do you truly want to upgrade this? Make it like a five-click no process. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but as it, it is, as it is in preview, my encouragement for like us and obviously anybody in the audience, Power BI ideas and anything else, they, the point of a preview is to get feedback on how to improve it. So th there are uh, and will be changes to the design of this um, going forward. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. I, I. I absolutely agree what you said. I, so yes, I am, I'm a data platform MVP. I'm always curious about trying out new things. I love that. I, I, I love trying out new things. Yeah. This is the first me. Second me is I am also a power BI admin owning the power bi environment mm -hmm. in a larger enterprise so microsoft thanks for providing this really 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 oh i'm still presenting my screen right i can I go back to it if you wanted to show something no no maybe so and <laughs> thank you is not that it's not that bad um Thank you, Microsoft, for providing me this new feature. Thank you very much. First me, second me. How dare you to make it possible that everyone is able, everyone is able to migrate a production thing and maybe then it doesn't work. What? The fuck. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Sorry, everyone. I'll click so. that. Um, there you go. At the uh, after the fact. <laughs> Thank you very much, Reed. But so um, and then once again, thank you for this feature especially. Uh, I said it in our conversation before this live. There was a team was approaching me 
asking how can we do so how can we solve this do we have to create 100 instances of 10 reports because we want to spread it to different audiences and things like that do we really have to do no you can use this feature be aware mm -hmm. it's preview i already tested it it works like expected the ui is yes potential um it works oh this is great so this is the reason why we use it successfully thank you for that it's great mm -hmm. I do have a couple questions that I'll throw up onto the screen now. So uh, as part of the configuration, the new one at least, um, Matthias is mentioning that the, the copy a report feature in the app into another workspace uh, has disappeared. Uh, was this expected? So um, <clears throat> I do, I, I read that this copy report, meaning creating a report from an existing report, and this report then will be saved in my workspace. Mm -hmm. I wasn't aware that this feature exists. <laughs> we, we do not ever use this feature. So th there are a, a couple almost 2000 report creators and more than and much much more report consumers and no one has ever used this feature i guess by accident that he did not use this feature reading across this requirement on a different place i assume that it makes sense to have this feature if it cannot be leveraged somewhere else by creating templates, things or so I did not miss it, but this is also something that, hey, it's preview. Yes, maybe yep. this feature will not work as expected. It does, but after migration, something else is not available any longer. So this is the rollout of features can be improved, I think. Yeah, and I've, I've also seen certain buttons accidentally disappear sometimes as well. Like when the new filters pane came out, there was a couple <laughs> options for, for <laughs> yeah. There, there were quite a few missing buttons that I had to tell the product, like, wait, oh, sorry, we forgot to add that, our bad. Um, so like, it could be that it, like you said, I think two scenarios, honestly, three. One, they forgot to add it. Two, it they want to add it and it's not working. Or three, they just don't think it should be included in, in, in the new release for whatever the reasons have. So there, there are a few, uh, but, but it sounds like neither you or I know, at least from Microsoft's perspective yet, specifically why that's not uh, listed in the so, configurations. So I wasn't aware that this feature exists, so this is my bad. Nevertheless, the rollout and so the fil uh, filter pane is different and also the formatting pane is different because you always had the chance, at least in preview, to toggle this off. But now if you have migrated your workspace, copy is gone. So this is, this is something completely a different story. I'm really lucky, I'm really lucky that none of my colleagues was using this before. And I already posted it yesterday that it's gone. So do not rely on this feature because of, don't use it. Uh, but I under absolutely understand the use case. Yeah, yeah. And I like I, like I said, for, for you in the, in the chat, Matthias, I'm curious of the use case for that. Uh, I generally try to, if I can, avoid people copying stuff um, versus, say, making a new lean report using analytics at Excel. Because normally what they do is I want to play with the data, essentially, is what, like, I want to analyze the data myself in an ad hoc scenario. 
Um, so then what pipelines can we build for that that prevents it copy paste versus say connecting to the data set or something else like that. Um, I know like back in the day before we had like, you know, thin reports, people would copy the models, which includes the import model, but then you have stale data, which would be a, a major issue. Um, yeah, but yeah um, I made a note to actually ask Microsoft about it on the DL, so I will be curious to see how they respond on why the copy report feature is missing. Um, I have another question from yep. uh, Didier. I'm going to pop that up. So loving the mold of audiences feature, he's noticed that there is, and again, it's probably, I'm, I'm going to chalk this up to an issue with preview it, just because there's not, not all the bugs have been ironed out. But apparently when you are uh, sharing in Teams, um, you can select the app, but sh uh, saving it inside of Teams uh, is disabled. So you can see it, but it won't let you add it, you know, as a... Uh, um, kind of has that little embedded option into a Teams group. I wasn't aware of that because um, I wasn't aware of that. Maybe it's a GA feature or maybe it's uh, it's not there because it's not GA right now. But I will make a mental note about this because this is something um, we will heavily use sooner or later. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm i thinking this is probably just something that it's going to come. I cannot see any possible reason why you can't embed in Teams. I'm, I'm just going to at least safely assume that it, it's probably related to its fact that it's a preview feature. Because like, I know a lot of stuff when they come out as a preview feature in desktop, you can't embed it yet because it has not been you know part of the service. So um, I, I'm guessing it's a yet to come um, integration. I, I, I guess I will sooner or later, I will try this out immediately in my tenant. Uh, yeah. And maybe then start writing emails. You CC me if, if, if you do that, I'll, I'll, I'll jump on the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Then I, at least mm -hmm. well, you know, one of the, the many nice things about being an MVP is if we do a, if I do a live stream, it gives me a chance to take some notes and like, I'm going to start a conversation about this or, or get it get another MVP to start a conversation with Microsoft engineers on, are you aware of this, this issue? Or could you provide some context on why you did this? I learned <laughs> for certain. <laughs> yeah. I, so, so I, so I am more the WTF guy. Um, <laughs> I, I love how you phrase this when you ask, can you please provide context why you did this? So, <laughs> This, to me, this sounds like a perfect WTF question. In, in with sugarcoating, yes. It's, a, it's the polite so, way to ask what, uh, yeah, uh, what the F. Yeah, I understand, understand. Don't, 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 you, you have, don't, uh, so I'm, so basically I'm sorry that sometimes I get emotional and then things happen. Yeah, no, no problem. I mean, I, I agree. And I think quite a few people in the chat have all agreed that that is a, great idea this is a needed feature but it is it is way too easy for production workspaces to be flipped over without going back and then it's you know if you are the the curious cat developer who clicked that button without first checking and maybe see what it did um then yeah it is too easy to to, to make a mistake and then probably yeah. pay for that mistake so and uh Maybe there should also be some kind of this disclaimer. If you migrate your app, you can't do this any longer. You can do that any longer, and this will also not work. Are you sure? As you mentioned, maybe two or three OK buttons before it's migrated. Did you? I, I know you've had, um, there's been internal discussions on the DL about this so far. Uh, has that been mentioned yet by you or anyone else as a feature of like, hey, there should be an extra warning that this is a what like a one-time migration. You can't go back. No, nope. might be a good for I, one of us. Then maybe to, yeah, we, we can suggest that on the DL just as some feedback. So, to, to I, so I I am I'm not on the bandwagon that I want to have a warning. Mm -hmm. I want to have a security group that allows my most advanced colleagues to be early adopters of more or less every feature. 
So in the global oh, admin this? settings, you have a spot where you can add security group. These are the only people who get that option when they're logged into the Power BI service. Exactly, exactly that. So That's, this is- Yeah, okay. So this is my perspective. And then if you have earned this spot in this security group, then please do whatever you do. But so this is what I mentioned is uh, maybe the rollout of features could be a little bit more others, <laughs> could be other, uh, different also now. Uh, yeah, agreed. I, I think ideally both is gonna be good because one, limit, it, limit the users, but two, even for those users who you might unequivocally trust still that extra prompt to explain to them, be careful when you click this, yes. just, just as an extra. So I, I think, you know, cover yes. both, both I, scenarios. I, yeah. So, so I absolutely agree with you. Sometimes uh, the other day, so I consider me being an somehow experienced user working on a Power BI desktop file for more than five minutes, closing the export desktop file, do you want to save? Of course not. What? I hit no. What? Damn. So maybe there should, <laughs> I would love to be that there is some kind of, hey, you have worked, you did a lot of changes since the last saving. Are you really sure that you, that all your work was in vain, really? So uh, this was this was frustrating. So I love this extra questions, even if it sometimes it's bothering me or what? Sure, because I'm sure. Really, mm -hmm. yes, I know what I'm doing uh, at least most of the time. So, <laughs> yep, agreed. This has been fantastic though, Tom. Um, like I dropped in the chat, if there are any remaining questions, throw them up now. Um, otherwise we can start to wrap up, but I certainly learned some new stuff, I think both from yourself and then people's uh, mentions in the, in the audience. This has been really good. Uh, and it's a great feature with a lot of potential, some bugs and wrinkles to still iron out for sure, but it, it's something that's been a long time coming and I'm, I'm glad it's, it's finally here to reduce the number of unique workspaces. Either way, like the best practice always for any Power BI tenant is the is as few artifacts as possible in the service to deliver basically the information needed to, you know, to all the users, right? And this this is one more feature that will help with that. Uh, actually, yeah, here we go. I have one one last question that we'll use to wrap up for the day. I like I like questions that let me learn. So can I, I, I want to uh, uh, answer something to Matthias, who wrote something or asked something in the chat. So basically, admins of an org. And then that's, um, oh no, he, I think yeah, that was just a comment, less about a question. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Yeah, I know, I know it's, it's, it's a question. Uh, I, I hear this also often. And this is also something maybe you might think about. Um, it's, uh, this is a rollout stream of features that, that we are basically talking here. So this is different. Mm -hmm. So scorecards work in the new app. Exactly, yes. Well, scorecards work in the new app. So, yes. Excellent. There you go. Easy answer um, to that one. So it's basically it's not a new app. It's just so base and the scorecard is um, inside the report, and the report is seen or not by the app. Uh, by the audience. So, yes. Perfect. All right. Well, Tom, I want to thank you so much for coming on today. This has been fantastic. Like I said, I've learned quite a bit. Um, I know we've my, had a very active, 
Yeah, we've had an active audience chat, so thanks everyone as well for being in on this. Um, looking forward to getting you back on again another time to talk about some stuff. This has been a great chance for us to catch up as well. So, um, and yes. fingers crossed, hopefully we see each other in person at the in MVP. March. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Keep your fingers and toes hopefully. crossed for this. Thank you very much, Reed. It was a pleasure. Absolutely, yeah. Have a great rest of your night and weekend, and everyone else have a great weekend as well. Yes, everyone. Thanks for attending. All right. Cheers. So. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And if you want to help support this channel, take a look at our channel memberships or our merchandise store for cool swag. And last but not least, please consider sharing this video on your social media platform of choice to help our channel grow. So, until next time.